I'm gonna give you about 10 seconds to get up and get out of bed. You wanna get better? You wanna self-improve? Get your ass up and lace them up. Stay hard. I don't need too, too many hours of sleep, man. I can go off for three, four hours. Really? Yeah. Uh, no, I can, I can, I can, you know, I, I can operate, man. Oh. The fifth or sixth game during the season where you're tired, mm -hmm. you're never catching up on that sleep anyway. Really? You're just going to be tired for the rest of the season, so you might as well just suck it up. Hello? Huh. Nick, are you uh, there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Um, yeah, that sounds good. Um, when is a good time? Let's plan next week. I'm not even going to sit here and lie to you, man. I'm addicted to hustle culture. I absolutely love waking up with some aggressive intent towards achieving my goal. I love having that sense of urgency that if I don't do it now, it's not going to happen at all. And I crave always wanting more and more and more out of myself. But the thing about hustle culture is that it's unsustainable. It's not a lifestyle that you can live for your entire life and expect other areas in your life to flourish. But what I've learned since doing this from about 2016 is that this is not the most efficient way to get things done over the long term. So in this video, I'm going to lay out exactly why you're wasting your life away with hustle culture, but more importantly, the long term health issues that come with engaging in this unsustainable lifestyle. And then I'm going to close out with some solutions on different lifestyles that you can choose that are more sustainable and are more in alignment with who you want to become and what you want to accomplish. First, by definition, hustle culture means it's a lifestyle of someone who continues to work and only rests for a short time. So the main idea of hustle culture is work as hard as you possibly can and only rest when you feel like you deserve it or when you feel like you've earned it. It doesn't prioritize the rest and recovery aspect. When you come across this lifestyle on social media, they basically talk about if you don't work hard enough, you don't deserve to sleep. You just don't deserve the rest. And the problem with that is that they're speaking in generalities. They're mostly targeting the people that need to get up off the couch and do something, or they sleep till noon every day. It's not targeting the people that are already getting up extremely early, that already have a routine of going to bed at a certain time, but the high achiever types are the ones that are gonna take this in and think, maybe I'm not doing enough. Maybe I do need to get up even earlier and be even more disciplined towards my goals despite already getting up at four or five in the morning and having a diligent routine of going to bed at nine or 10 every night. So I've got these three major health issues that come with hustle culture and anybody that is into productivity or wanting to better themselves, this is probably gonna be enough for you to realize that this lifestyle is unsustainable and you've gotta choose something different. First, chronic stress leads to long-term health issues. So with hustle culture, it's all about this high stress, fast paced lifestyle. There's no time to think you just need to act and you need to act fast. But anyone that's on the same wavelength understands that there are good stresses and there are bad stresses. So when you have the bad stress, you're talking about things like working long hours, lack of sleep, lack of money, confrontations, arguments. These are the things that leave you drained and depleted. And these are also the things that leave you with long-term health issues. But then at the same time, you have these good stresses. These are the ones that leave you feeling energized and ready to attack the world. These also cause growth. It's things like competing in a game, a first date, working out. There's really no threat or fear that you're encountering. It's actually just pushing your limits a little bit. So to understand how these bad stresses affect your health in the long term, it helps to understand the body's chemical reactions. Now, I'm not going to go into this deep scientific lecture and explain all the different issues that go on with your body whenever you experience stress, but the two main hormones that you need to pay attention to when it comes to stress are adrenaline and cortisol. So I know you've experienced an adrenaline rush at least some point in your life, at least I hope so. When adrenaline is released, it keeps you on high alert and keeps you focused during the stressful event. At the same time, cortisol is released. When cortisol is released, that's when glucose from the liver is released and into the bloodstream so you get this quick burst of energy. This is so you can perform physically during that stressful event. But keep in mind, this is really the most important part. Your body doesn't know the difference between good stress and bad stress. It just reacts. The difference is how you respond to the stress or really how you feel after the experience. So it doesn't understand these different situations of if you have a great workout, if your boss is jumping down your throat for some unreasonable issue, or you have this life or death situation. 
But the thing you want to focus on is chronic stress, but more specifically, negative chronic stress. So all I mean when I say chronic is just long term. I'm not talking about this acute short term stress that an event happens, it's very quick and you come back down to your normal levels. Now, this is where it all ties into hustle culture. So when you're going on very little sleep, your body is extremely stressed. When you're pushing yourself to the absolute limit every single day, your body is very stressed. When you have this constant release of adrenaline and cortisol every single day, day in and day out, it becomes too much. It's these elevated levels of cortisol over the long term that cause some major issues. Things like headaches, insomnia, digestive issues, compromises in your immunity system, weight gain, anxiety, pain, high blood pressure. You can already see that these are some pretty damaging issues. So when you have this chronic stress of hustle culture, it also leads to the second major health issue, which is sleep deprivation. Everybody knows that sleep is arguably the most important factor in recovery. Without it, you feel dumber, weaker, less confident. The list really goes on and on. The issue here really lies in the use of stimulants to keep you going. So yeah, you can get by on a few days with some sleep deprivation, but I definitely don't recommend this in the long term because this is where you accumulate sleep debt. And once you accumulate sleep debt, it's very hard to recover from that. The thing with hustle culture is that when you're running on minimal sleep, you start to lean towards caffeine and your one cup of coffee today turns into two cups next week and it turns into eight cups a month from now. Then before you know it, you're having your full pot of coffee and then in the afternoon you need another pick me up so you hit an energy drink or a pre-workout just to keep you focused during that afternoon drag. So this chronic use of stimulants on and on and on leads to both physical problems and mental issues. On the physical side, you have things like heart disease, kidney disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, stroke, obesity. But then on the mental side, you have things like depression and lack of self-worth. Now there's a lot of research on just exactly how much sleep you need, but the thing is, it really depends on the person. There are people that can get by on like five or six hours of sleep, and that's really just a result of genetics. There are interviews with Kobe Bryant where he talked about how he didn't really need that much sleep. You're talking about an elite athlete that in most cases would need over 10 hours of sleep just to recover from your daily intense workouts. The average that people really find the best rest is between seven and nine hours. I'd encourage you to play with your sleep cycle a little bit and just see what works best for you. The big thing here is really trying to stick to a regular bedtime whenever you can make that happen and then waking up at the same time every day. The body likes routine, so the more that you can put it in a sustainable routine, the more results you're gonna have over the long term. Now we talked about chronic stress, we talked about sleep deprivation, and the third major issue really builds on these two, and that's decreases in mental sharpness. So no matter what career you're in, or if you're in school, or whatever you're focusing on, your brain is your most important asset. If you can't think, you cannot perform. This goes for even the most simple tasks. So earlier I talked a little bit about adrenaline and cortisol, and how they work with your body when it experiences stress. But I didn't touch on the mental side as much because that really deserves its own point. So according to Premier Neurology Center, the five negative ways stress affect brain function are that it impairs memory. It changes the brain structure by overproducing white matter and less gray matter when they both need to be in balance. It leaves you more susceptible to mental illness. It kills brain cells and it shrinks the brain. So I know I've just dropped some seriously heavy stuff when it comes to the health issues that come with living this unsustainable lifestyle of hustle culture but I want you to think a little bit about the reason why you're working so hard. If you're anything like me, you're probably working so hard because you have goals of supporting those around you so that they don't have to worry in the future. If you go down, those dreams go down the drain. Everyone that you're trying to support are directly impacted. So you have to prioritize yourself, you have to prioritize your health. Now I'm gonna to talk to you about choosing a lifestyle that actually makes sense, it's sustainable, but it actually fits with who you are, who you want to become, and it's in alignment with your goals. So I'm gonna list out four different lifestyles you can choose. These are not all of the lifestyles. These are just some that are very popular within the self-improvement space. If you like some of these, I would encourage you to research them a little bit more, but if none of them really resonate, I would still encourage you to do a little more research so you can find what fits you best. First, we have slow living. This is a lifestyle that encourages a slower approach to the aspects of everyday life. It involves completing tasks at more of a leisurely pace and being present in the moment at all times. Then you have simple living. This refers to practices that promote simplicity in one's lifestyle, reducing the number of possessions, depending less on technology and services, and just spending less money overall. Then you have intentional living. This means being aware of one's fundamental beliefs 
and willingly making an effort to reflect those beliefs in one's behavior. It's about being aware of who you are and what you want, and then choosing to commit to attitudes and decisions which align with this self-image. Then you have minimalism. You strive to only use the things that serve a purpose, having only what you need to go on in your daily life, not anything extra. Now, like I mentioned, these are just a few different lifestyles that you can choose. But I will say that my two favorite are intentional living and minimalism. Over the past year, I've implemented more of an intentional style of living with emphasis in minimalism. By implementing those two things over the past year, it's absolutely changed my life. So now that you have some ideas on different lifestyles that you can choose, we've got to put this stuff into practice and actually build it into your reality. So when you're choosing your lifestyle, there's really two steps that you need to consider so you get the most out of it. First is identify your points of focus. And number two, reverse engineer your goals. Let's talk about points of focus. Point of focus is the direction that you want to lead your life. I'll give you an example to help out so you can get the ball rolling for yourself. I've made my two points of focus as pursuing my highest potential and doing what I enjoy. If an opportunity comes into my life and they don't fit those points of focus, I can't accept them. For example, when it comes to work and something comes across my desk and it is a great opportunity to grow, but I would absolutely hate my life if I pursued it, I don't take it. At the same time, if it's something that I really enjoy, but it doesn't cause me to grow, I can't take it. So those are the points of focus that really fit my personality best and feel free to use them if you want. But if you don't like those and they don't resonate with you, I would encourage you to really sit down, take the time and develop some that fit you best. Just keep in mind, we all go through different seasons in our life. So when you go through different seasons, these points of focus can change. For example, in my early 20s, my point of focus was to make as much money as possible without really considering if I enjoyed it or not. You can only do that for so long before your quality of life sucks. So that's why my points of focus have evolved over time. The biggest reasons for really defining these points of focus is that it gives you some strategy towards what you're trying to accomplish in life with your particular lifestyle. Hence why I use intentional living. Something else when it comes to these points of focus that you really need to keep in mind is that when you choose a point of focus, you open yourself up to some vulnerabilities. Now, let me explain that a little bit so it makes more sense. If you're in pursuit of your highest potential, it can be extremely easy to hold yourself up in a room and just spend hours and hours consuming self-improvement content, consuming more knowledge, and eventually losing sight in the application part of this whole process. You can't stay isolated just consuming knowledge all the time and never apply it. You just won't grow. And for the other point of focus of doing what you enjoy, you have to really be careful from spending hours and hours avoiding the boring work because it's not technically what you enjoy. And that'll eventually cause you to lose sight in the whole reason why you're doing this anyways, and it's to actually monetize what you actually enjoy doing. At the end of the day, you have to make a living, so it's going to come with boring work and stuff that you don't enjoy. This is exactly why living hustle culture over the long term causes you to just be busy and you're just kind of going at things in a shotgun approach with no strategic direction. You have to have space between your thoughts. And when you absorb something, you need to sit on it for a little bit and help your ideas come to manifest into reality. If you're just constantly doing something and doing something and doing something, your brain never has that time to process the information. We wanna find that lifestyle that helps us live with strategic intent. So the next step, like I mentioned, we need to reverse engineer our goals so that they are in alignment with the lifestyle that we've chosen. So in my own process, I like to start with simplifying. I like to lay out exactly who I want to become and what I want to accomplish. Once I have those things laid out, I start to look at what do I do on a daily basis and is that impacting the long-term potential of achieving this particular goal? If it's effective, then I keep it. But if it's causing me some inefficiencies in life, I've got to look at eliminating it. Now this process involves eliminating some things and sometimes some people from your life if they're stopping you from achieving your long-term goal. This is really where it gets tough for people because first and foremost, that that's a hard thing to do. But you have to keep in mind, why are you doing this in the first place? It's like I mentioned earlier, think about those people that you're trying to make life easier on. Those people around you, probably your family, maybe your friends. So when you've chosen this lifestyle, identify who you want to become and what you want to do. These are your goals. Then build a routine with boundaries to achieve these goals. This is your action plan. And then third, you've got to remove the things in life that do not facilitate success in this routine you're building. This is streamlining the process. So this is really how you take the hard work principle of hustle culture 
and you create a lifestyle that is more sustainable and actually fits with who you are as a person. Then you just use that lifestyle to strategically work towards your goal on a daily basis. It's not the high stress chaos that comes with hustle culture. I like to think of it as an organized form of systems and processes. Now, if you have questions on this process or you just want to start a conversation, just leave a comment below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will catch you guys in the next one.